Hello everybody! Happy Art Day! Welcome to Freakin' Art! I'm Anastasia and I'm so excited you decided to join me to make some art today. Well, International Women's Day is coming up and I thought I'd use today's class to talk about one of my favorite artists, Georgia O'Keeffe. So we're going to look at some of her paintings and then make our very own Georgia O'Keeffe inspired flower collage. Isn't that fun? I think so. Now I grew up with Georgia O'Keeffe prints around my house. She's most well known for her really big flower paintings, but she did do paintings of cities and landscapes. She was active as an artist from the mid-1920s until her death, which was late 1980s, I believe 1986. Well, I got a sprout. <laughs> oh, that. Okay. She did start to lose her eyesight at the end of her um, life. So she had some help making her last paintings. Yeah, she had some help making some of her later paintings. So I think we're going to look at some of her paintings, but I think some of the most um, unique things about Georgia O'Keeffe is her perspective. Now that's how she saw the world. So we all have our own unique perspective, how we see the world, and that translates to our compositions of our artwork, how we arrange things on our, our page. So let's look at some of examples of her work. So here we go. Like I said, Georgia O'Keeffe's perspective was really important. She did really large flower paintings that were really close up. So you couldn't necessarily tell that it was a flower you were looking at. It looked kind of like an abstract painting. And she thought it was really easy to just ignore a simple little flower or a rose. But if she painted it really big, then you'd have to pay attention. So you can see here, she zoomed in to the center of a flower. So it just kind of looks like shapes and colors and lines. Here again, here's some pictures of some calla lilies. And then they're zoomed in super far. You can see a little bit more of the flower. You can see the shape of the petal. And she has the, her lines are mimicking that shape of the petal. So you can see most of her compositions, how she's arranging her images on the page are so zoomed in that the flowers are touching almost every side, if not every side. I like this one a lot. It's a black iris. And on this side of the page, you can see when she first started painting it, it was a little bit more realistic. It looked like the actual iris. And as she kept on painting it, she got closer and closer. So it got really abstract. So it stopped looking like the flower and looked more like shapes and colors and lines. And then in this one, she zoomed in so much to the center uh, you can't tell what it is at all. So, we're going to take this idea of zooming in really far to a flower, really close into a flower, so it looks just like shapes and colors. You can see on my example here, I did a sweet pea flower. It's from the pea family. And I made my flower first and just focused on the color and the shape of the petals and the piston and then cropped my piece of paper so that the flower took up the whole composition. So for today's class, 
We're going to need some different colored paper, some scissors, you might want some crayons if you want to draw a little bit of details on your flowers, but you don't need much, and then some glue. Now, we're going to be doing flowers. I brought in some flowers to look at. They smell pretty too. I also have a really cool flower book with all the flowers in my area. They're super tiny pictures though. If you have pictures of flowers around, maybe in a magazine or you can look it up on the computer, or maybe you have flowers in your house, like some plants that are blooming, or you go outside, you can use any of those. And if you don't see a real flower or a picture of a flower, just think about it and use your memory, okay? So before we start, let's do a little bit of breathing and a stretch so we can be super focused and ready to make our artwork. So everybody breathe in and breathe out. Let's do that one more time. Let's breathe in and breathe out. Now let's roll our shoulders back. And roll them forward and interlace our fingers and stretch out those fingers and hands. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, I feel focused and ready to make some art. I hope you are too. I think it's a good idea to cut out the different shapes of your flower first and then put it on a piece of paper so you can make sure your flower takes up the whole piece of paper. You could also glue it down to a piece of paper as you go and then cut down a piece of paper. That works too. So we're gonna take these flowers, they're all pretty cool, but remember Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings were pretty simple. It was just a couple colors and simple shapes, organic shapes. So those are ones that we find in nature. Pick a flower. I think I'm gonna work with this lily. Maybe this one here, because you can see the shape of the flowers really well. Um, again, if you don't have an actual flower to work from, you can look at pictures or work from your memory, and you're just trying to break it down into simple shapes. Let's start with our background piece of paper. You can always start with a bigger piece of paper and then cut it down. I'm going to go ahead and start with a small piece of paper so I don't have to worry about my flower floating in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and tear my paper in half because I'm just trying to get a small piece of paper. You can work as big as you want, but the idea is to have your flower take up the whole piece. So it might be easier to start with a smaller piece of paper. But up to you, artist choice. Okay, I'm just folding this in half again so I have a nice square to work from. Creasing it, you can cut it, you can use ruler and you can measure it. You can be as precise as you want. Up to you. So I have a nice square to start here to build my flower on. So I'm looking at my petals here and they seem pretty light, almost white. This one's the darkest. So I think I'll use some white paper and some pink paper to make my petals. Now it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six petals. I'm going to start with these three, and then this one I might just treat as one big petal. So we'll start with these lighter ones first, so I'm going to start with my white paper. And you don't have to draw your flowers first. You can just cut it out, the shapes that you think work. It looks like the petals get wider at the end, and then they go in narrow towards the center and they kind of have this nice curve line and it's a little bit bumpy. So if I start from the center, go out with that curve line. And it goes to a little bit of a point. 
Now, if I don't want my drawing to show, I can cut it out and just put the glue on this side. So I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just thinking about the shape of my petals and trying to do as simple as possible. So I'm gonna go with this one. Seems a little bit more oblong, but again, it goes in at the center there and it has a little bit of a point. We'll go ahead and cut these two out because instead of overlapping my drawing, I'm gonna overlap my paper. And if there's any details you want to add to your flowers, you can always do it with your crayons at the end. Okay, so I got my square, and I got two petals. So let's get a couple more petals. So I'm gonna do this bottom one here. So again, it looks like it goes in, and then it comes out, kind of like an ice cream cone, and it comes to a point. But remember, your flower could be completely different. This is just a bouquet I got from my husband. It's a good excuse to get some flowers saying, I need them for our art project. <laughs> so when you're working on your own flower, you just think of how you can make the shape's really simple. Okay, for this, this one I'm gonna use this back petal, well, I'm gonna use the pink. Now this one's a little bit narrower than my other petals, and it has this nice little ruffly edge. And again, it looks like it comes to a little point. Now we got these two inner petals. I think I'll do those in white again, and I'll probably use my crayon to color on it. So these ones are a little bit smaller. Then this one. But they still come up, they go in at the bottom, and they kind of come out like an ice cream cone and go into a point. So I'll draw two of those. One looks a little bit taller than the other one, so there we go. So I got all my petals. Maybe I want a couple leaves. So let's look at the shape of these leaves. They're coming up to a little point going down. So I'll do two of those. We'll do another one. I guess on this scrap here I have, we'll take up the whole page. And we have these pistons in the center. That's the little stems with the pollen on them. And they're like a, a pink with a little gray top. So I think I'm gonna cut out some pink lines and then some little blue gray tops. So I got one, two, three, four little pollen tops. So I think I'll use this. I'm just gonna cut out little oblong shapes here. Again, you can draw it if you want to, but you don't have to. You could just be cutting out the shapes the whole time without drawing. Cause I don't think it's about the precision of the shape, it's more about so it doesn't have to look like a perfect shape of a flower. It's more about getting the idea of a flower. So I got some little pollen toppers. Everything over here, so we can put it together. I got my two leaves and I got my flower petals. Just need a couple little of these pistons. And they kind of look like little arched lines. So I'm just gonna cut out a couple lines. Now, as the fun part, we're gonna put it, arrange it all on our piece of paper. Again, your flower probably looks completely different than mine. This is to just give you an idea of the steps I'm taking to get my abstract Georgia O'Keeffe inspired 
flower collage. So I'm going to start with the leaves because they're in the background. So you're going to take your glue or your glue stick. My glue stick looks like it's pretty much done. So I'm going to take some Elmer's glue and put a little bit of glue on the back. Remember, you don't need to ever cover the back completely in glue. I'm going to put my... Ah, I got an extra leaf. <laughs> I'm putting my leaves down in the very back here. Looks like I'm going to have three, which I love odd numbers. And I'm trying to have parts of my flower or my leaf touch every edge because we want it to be a real close-up. So next, I will take the back part of my my back petal here because it looks like it's the farthest away. Put some glue on that. And that was the one I decided to do in the pink color because it seemed like it had the most pigment or the most color to it where the other petals seem to be closer to white. So I'm touching the top to the very top of my page there. Let's do the side petals. So I'm putting some glue on the back. And this looks like it's going straight out to the side. So I'm gonna have them all just meet in the middle for ease. And see, we're slowly creating the illusion, that magic trick of space because we're overlapping our shapes. So all these little tools that us artists use to help trick your eye into looking like something's not just flat and two-dimensional, but actually has shape to it. We're gonna go with this one. We'll go like that for this side here. Put a little bit of glue on the back. And I'm having it touch that edge. Looks like it's coming almost straight out, but a little bit up. So we'll have it go up a little bit. There we go. Next, we're gonna put in, maybe we'll put in our little interior petals for the top here. So I've got two of those, and we'll put one right here. It looks like they're almost part of this petal, but they just kind of slightly stick out. Let's take another peek. This one's coming in more towards the center. It's almost right in between these two. Now I'm gonna put on my bottom petal. And it looks like it's maybe a little bit long for my page, but that's okay. I'd rather have it hang off so I can fold it over than for it to be too short because I'm trying to get a very close up view. So I'm putting it down. Now I'm going to fold it over. Looks pretty nice. I have my petals touching all four sides. Now before I put in my pistons, and the little pollen things on top, that's the inside of that flower there, I'm gonna use my crayons to color a little bit and put in these markings. I got a little bit of green on the outside of my flower on the top of it, so I'm gonna put a little bit of green here, just a little bit. And remember, we're not going crazy with the detail, because that's not what Georgia O'Keeffe did. I'm gonna take my dark red, I'll maybe do a little bit of red here on the inside. And then I'm gonna do those lines because I think these lines inside the lily are really important. But again, your flower could be a completely different kind of flower. So you use your eyes to to look at your flower and see the different parts of the petal and the pistons and the shape and the colors and just try to make it real simple. 
And then these two have a little bit of a darker red and a little bit of green. These two outer leaves don't have any of those little red lines, but the bottom one has a couple faint ones and those inside petals have a lot. So I'll do a couple lines and then I will do a lot more on these inside petals. I think that looks pretty good for simplifying my lily here. Now I'm just gonna put in some of those pistons. And it looks like they're all really close to this inside petal there. And now I, all I have left are my little pollen pieces. And there we go. Well, that's how you can put together your own Giorgio O'Keefe inspired flower. This one's a little bit more simple and abstract. It was done from a photo, photo, so sometimes it's easier to break down shapes when you're looking at a photo. But here's my two Georgia O'Keefe inspired flower collages. Now I really think you should check out her work yourself and maybe go to the library and see if you can find a book on her or just google her on the internet and you could see some of her paintings up close because it's a lot easier to see them yourself than with me showing you from a book over the video. Well I hope you liked today's class. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps me continue to make these fun, free art classes for you here on the internet. And of course, I would love to see what your collages look like. They don't at, at all have to be as many pieces as mine are. It could just be like two, three pieces. So please tag me on Instagram at freaking art or send me an email or some snail mail with your art in it, in it and we can look at it together next week. If you have any questions feel free to reach out and as always I hope you really enjoyed today's class and learning about this really great American artist. Okay guys I'll see you next week. Bye.